up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com. Back from vacation to Portland, Maine. Had a nice little summer trip, and it was a good time to take a vacation because not a whole lot happened last week, but a lot of stuff happening uh, in the coming weeks with Razorback football and and some other things, uh, especially recruiting also, SEC media days and all that stuff coming up. Danny West, Pete Roulier going to join the show today. Also, all that and more on Hogsports Live. Okay, first thing I want to get into, uh, I had posted some stuff not long ago about Arkansas expected to unveil new uniforms, and we kind of went over some stuff from the past and talked a lot about that, and I do have a correction to make. I've got to go back and, and, and fix something, and it's back in 1998-99 season, Arkansas actually had one fat red stripe down the leg, not two red stripes. So I wanted to correct that. I know a lot of people are thinking I was going to probably correct my stance that Arkansas is going to unveil new uniforms based on the 150, SEC 150 patch that was going on the new uniforms that Arkansas Equipment tweeted out. But uh, I still think they're coming out with new uniforms. Uh, I still say that. And people are kind of coming after me. Trey Biddy, I trusted you as a credible source and you had my hopes up. Trey, what's happening? Fix this. A lot of stuff. It takes two years to come out with new uniform, to redesign new uniforms. But I still expect them to come out with new uniforms this season. So just kind of wanted to get that out of the way because I did put the timeline, I think, June, July 13th, I guess, that <laughs> they would come out by them. So we're getting kind of close to that. So real quick before we jump into the rest of the stuff, I want to encourage everybody to like, share, follow, comment if you haven't done so already. Uh, get your questions in for Danny West, Pete Roulier, myself. We're definitely going to answer some stuff today. And um, there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can listen on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening via Apple Podcasts, be sure to throw us five stars in a review if you like the content. Also on Spotify and Stitcher, uh, Facebook Live, you can watch the show, and YouTube. Throw us a thumbs up if you haven't already uh, if you like the content. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that notifications bell and subscribe. And, and like, subscribe to the page on Facebook as well. So, uh, just to jump right into it again, get your questions in. Had a had a good trip to Maine. A lot of good food, beautiful scenery. It's kind of it's crazy to think about Maine, which is the uh, Portland, which is the largest city in Maine, is sixty six thousand people. That's the same size as Conway, but it just has such a bigger city feel because of all the tourism and stuff. But did a lot of cool sightseeing, and uh, that was actually my first long week vacation in two years because we had the site changeover last year and I didn't really feel comfortable taking a vacation so I've taken some long weekend stuff but that was the first time I really just got in the way didn't open up the computer so I had a lot of stuff to catch up on had a flight delay missed the connection had to spend last night in Chicago or night before last in Chicago so we just got back in town yesterday uh, but been kind of catching up since then um, okay let's see what's on the docket let's jump into things here uh, a story I thought that was really good by Brad Crawford that came out uh, this past week was dream scenarios for each SEC school. And for Arkansas, eight wins. And I think he's probably spot on with that. You know, Arkansas won two games last year. There is an avenue if everything fell right for them to win eight. I personally think, you know, I'm teetering between five and six wins this season based on what I see in fall camp, which is – you know, what, three weeks away. We're like three weeks away from fall camp, and next week is SEC Media Days. We'll talk about that a little bit later too. But you have Portland State win. This is this is the dream scenario. This is eight wins. Portland State, Ole Miss, Colorado State, San Jose State, probably L to A&M, go on the road, beat Kentucky, Auburn, Alabama, probably losses, Mississippi State, Western Kentucky, that's seven, and then finish it out with a win over Missouri. That would be an ideal scenario and a possibility to win a bowl game with nine wins. But um, that is dramatic. That's a stretch. That's probably the absolute cap for Arkansas. Again, I'm saying five, six wins. I'm not thinking that Arkansas is going to, uh, to come out and win eight games next year. But I do think that they'll make a nice step forward. And like I've said before, it doesn't just mean wins. It also means not getting the snot beat out of you, which happened plenty of times last year. Coming out, showing some gumption and fighting and, you know, maybe losing to a more talented team in the fourth quarter. I think I've said that plenty of times before. Uh, an interesting linebacker in the transfer portal, Trey Allison, out of Syracuse, a guy that was committed to SMU under Chad Morris and then three days after Chad Morris uh, departed for Arkansas, uh, he committed to Syracuse and has now entered the transfer portal. The second 
Texas player from the 2018 class uh, from who's at Syracuse who has entered the transfer portal. So that might be a guy to watch. Committed to, to SMU for a good while. Um, 6'1", 230-pound guy that apparently can play a lot of positions at linebacker and outside, got some good speed and stuff. So maybe a guy to keep an eye on. Don't know that he's going to be immediately eligible just being a redshirt freshman this coming season. But, you know, maybe a guy that, that they look at bringing in. I still think that obviously they need to bring in a linebacker who can help them next year, but that just it didn't look like that's happening. So a uh, big weekend for – big week, I should say, for Daniel Gafford. 21 points, 10 rebounds, four block shots uh, while leading Chicago to a 96-76 win over the Lakers uh, in Las Vegas. NBA Summer League uh, had eight points and eight rebounds yesterday in their loss to the Cavs. Uh, so not as good a showing yesterday, but uh, definitely a nice debut for Daniel Gafford. And Daryl Mason had a big game um, Saturday with uh, five three-pointers for the Mavs. So, in a 113-81 win over Houston Rockets in Vegas. So, uh, a little bit of summer league action going on for those guys. I know a lot of people are still following that. And, um, you know, with Daniel Gafford, he was a guy that I had on my top ten Razorback list. This is another thing I kind of got chastised for while I was going. I did some preloaded content stuff, but I had a top ten Razorbacks list that nobody liked. And I have to explain myself a little bit because I didn't want to just jump into it while I was on vacation. But I kind of wanted to – first of all, I plan to do this as something that I – you know, redo quite often just based on games and, you know, things that are happening, depending on the season, how often I update it. But I wanted to pay homage a little bit to some guys that, you know, aren't Razorbacks currently, but uh, have done some big things lately. Some people were criticizing me for including guys that weren't, you know, going to be with the team next year. Daniel Gafford's on the list, Isaiah Campbell. But, uh, you know, those guys are going to get bumped off pretty soon. But, I, uh, you know, on this first list, I wanted to make sure that I, I paid a little homage to those guys. Isaiah Campbell, I had number one. Trevor Izell, two. Uh, Isaiah Joe, three. So there's your first current guy. Um, Jack Kenley, four. Daniel Gafford, five. Dijon Harris, six. Now, Dijon's a guy that I think is going to move up, and we'll get into a little bit of SEC Media Day's discussion and who I think is going to come with Danny a little bit later. Uh, Matt Cronin at seven, Rakeem Boyd at eight, Cheyenne O'Grady at nine, and I caught a little flack for Chandler Morris at 10. I just think when you get a, a quarterback commit, I don't, I don't plan on keeping Chandler Morris at 10, okay? I, like I said, this is a list that's going to move up and down a lot, but he had just committed and as is a quarterback, so I thought that was probably notable that, uh, you know, on my top ten Razorback list. So not a list that everybody liked, caught some criticism for it. Usually people like those lists when I put them out, but uh, not everybody. And I think it was just people didn't quite understand what I was going for, and I wasn't able to interact and uh, explain it because uh, I did want to take advantage of the vacation time. So that was my top ten Razorbacks list. going to change a lot here coming up, and a lot of it's going to be seasonal-based, so you could see a guy who had a really a good basketball season drop down as more football players move up uh, as we approach football season. The big news last week was Kevante Dixon, and I'm going to go ahead and look into bringing in Danny West. I want to see how long I've gone here. About 8:33. That's pretty good. Pretty good intro time. So I want to go ahead and bring in Danny West here, uh, and we're going to get jump right into recruiting. Uh, actually, I want to go, before I do that, I want to make sure. I want to make sure I don't have any questions here that I that I don't need to go over. Okay, I don't think anything jumps out, but we'll we'll jump into some more questions here in a minute. But let me go ahead and bring up Danny graphic here, and we'll jump right into this. Hey, bud. Hey, Danny. Danny, you're on Hog Sports Live. Uh, I was just about to get into some Kelvante Dixon uh, stuff, you know, since that was really the big news that happened last week. But uh, anything you want to say before we jump into that? Welcome back. That was a horrible list that you put out last week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what else is going on? No, glad to have you back, man. Hope you enjoyed vacay. Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, it was one of those vacations where you're just like, I kind of need a vacation for my vacation just because yep. we were going 100 miles an hour. The place we were staying at was really nice, but there were no blinds. So I woke up to the sun every morning, you know, so that wasn't necessarily ideal. But we were going, you know, 100 miles an hour every day, going to the beach a few days and, you know, right. walking around and going to a lot of the nice restaurants. Incredible weather in Maine. I can understand why rich people live in two places during the, uh, during the <laughs> summer and winter. Yeah. So, uh, stuff, this Calvante Dixon, 
uh, commitment, Danny. What can you tell us about him? Well, he's a utility guy at Carthage High School down in Texas. That's exactly what Arkansas wants him to be. Uh, continue to be here in Fayetteville, six foot, one eighty five. I think he's slippery in the open field. You know, you'll see him line up primarily in the slot, but you know they'll send this guy in motion, use him on the end of rounds. Um, then he's also, to me, Trey, I think he's shown the ability to to stretch the field as a deep threat. Mm-hmm. Just let him run behind the defense. He's got good hands, good speed, and I think even at his size, you know, about 180, 185, I think he's got some strength to him. He's been hard to bring down for a lot of guys. So, you know, and the one thing you can't help but notice, by the way, when you're watching his film is that big right tackle tossing people around over there, Takias Crawford. So, you know, if you can – I tell people all the time, if you can go go sign four more Takias Crawfords, mm-hmm. look out. <laughs> but yeah. the bad news is those guys are pretty hard to come by. But, yeah, I thought it was a good good pickup for Arkansas. And a, a timely one at that. They needed a little – need to follow up some momentum after getting uh, Chandler and, and Blaine Toll. So maybe they'll continue that here over the next uh, few weeks going into the cookout. So this is a guy that can play running back, wide receiver. Yeah. I think Gabe said he's a, he's kind of built like a corner two, 10 10-7, 100-meter guy. And that's pretty smoke. I don't think people realize how fast that actually oh, is. Oh, that's quick. That's yeah, because really quick. for a football guy, you know, like you see these world class athletes who just focus on track. You know, so much about it is yeah. is the start and getting off the line. But if you can do a sub eleven in high school, that's moving pretty good. And I don't think that everybody quite realizes that, that how fast that is. Is is yeah. this a guy that could possibly end up on defense? Possibly. You know, they're they're gonna consider him an athlete Mm -hmm. um he doesn't have a home position to be honest with you wide receiver or running back at this time but they're going to give him a shot at special teams too you know as a a kickoff return guy punt return guy so wouldn't surprise me man i think he i think he could probably play defense for you but starting off i would i would certainly expect him to to give offense the first shot you had a good story i guess last week on arkansas and their teammates that they've had committed in class. It seems like almost every year they have a, a pair of teammates. I would think that this probably strengthens your chances of ending up with Dixon uh, and Takias Crawford both since you have them both on board. I, you don't really, I guess, see a whole lot of teammates decommit ever. Yeah, they're pretty close. Um, yeah, I was talking – I was actually talking to Takias about it the other day. And, you know, uh, a lot of people don't realize his buddy – and uh, I think his name is Jaden Jackson – uh, you know, he's not a notable recruit by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not sure he's even got a 24-7 sports page. But he's also, you know, this is Takias' best friend in life. And, and you know, he goes with Takias on every visit. And uh, this young man is also planning on walking on at Arkansas and giving it a shot. So mm-hmm. that would be three, three yeah. guys from the same school, much like, you know, Mansfield Legacy last year. I think they've done three uh, – just one time that I can remember. Oh, I, I take that back. The Fayetteville trio of 2013 with uh, Briggs and, and Brooks and, and, of course, Austin Allen. That's mm-hmm. the only other one I can recall where they signed three from the same school. Yeah, I, th- I think you might be right on that, Danny. Oh, probably so. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, Danny West from hogsports.com join us. You can read all of his stuff at hawgsports.com. Danny does a great job covering recruiting. If you want the insider recruiting information, there's nobody better to get it from than Danny West. Right now, you can get hogsports.com for just a dollar for your first month, or you can sign up for a year, get a seven-day free trial with that, and take 30% off your first year. So almost nothing to lose with hogsports.com right now uh, for the best Razorback coverage, and it's about to get really hot with things like SEC Media Days uh, coming up here shortly. Danny, you had a nice little article uh the other day, or I guess this was, I don't think I got it listed as four hours ago, so it wasn't that long ago, about uh, Arkansas's uh, Inside the Numbers. So we do a regular Inside the Numbers deal for, for football games where we, you know, break down the interesting numbers. Sure. I'll say the one that stuck out to me was verbal commits recruited by Jeff Trailer. You had uh, yeah, Cal- Calvante Dixon, Takias Crawford, John Gentry, Savion Williams, and Alan Horace all committed to him. So five commitments out of the 11 right now for for uh for trailer yeah and and, you know it's worth noting that he had some help on some of those guys like a a justin step with savion williams of course savion 
is a wide receiver. Alan Horace at tight end. Of course, uh, B. Lonnie is, you know, he's helping out there as well. So you could call that a split, but yeah, man, Jeff Trailer, you know, if you ever read some of the Texas A&M or Baylor or uh, Texas websites, the 24-7 sites, oh, yeah, they know. you see his name a lot, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and uh, maybe not necessarily is he getting a ton of guys that, that those schools have all, you know, offered. But when you pick up a Takias Crawford, that's notable. And they start to say, hey, man, that Jeff Trailer's still rocking and rolling up in Fayetteville. So very well respected. And, and uh, you know, I think he's done a, an outstanding job. May not be done yet. You know, they're mm-hmm. rolling in East Texas right now. Still got a few more outstanding uh, undecided targets like a Garrett Hayes. You know, the Dustin Fry is also uh, recruiting. But Jeff Trailer certainly, uh, I would call the lead guy there. Danny, I'll say this also. When I went to the 24-7 Sports Publisher Conference last year and obviously meeting a lot of people because we just made the change over, but there were more than a couple writers in the state of Texas who covers very teams in Texas who brought up Jeff Trailer and what a good evaluator he is, not just a recruiter, but uh, what a good evaluator he is also. I'll say another thing that stood out to me on your list here is Arkansas's average ranking per commitment, which is .8755. Uh, which ranks 22 in the country. And uh, so just to put that in perspective right now, Arkansas, and that bring, that'll that segment weigh me to my next point about Arkansas's team recruiting ranking. Arkansas is 36 in the country right now. There is not – let's see. So out of the, out of the top 43, Arkansas uh, ranks – let's see. Arkansas is 22 in terms of average player rankings, and the only team that has – in the top – 50, the only other team that has fewer commitments than Arkansas is Texas with seven. So all the te- teams ranked ahead of Arkansas have, have more commitments than Arkansas does, or at least as many at 11. So Arkansas definitely on the low end in terms of the number of commitments right now. Uh, but what can you tell us about Arkansas team rankings right now? Well, you know, I think a lot of people right now look at it and say, oh, we're number 36 overall. You know, we keep hearing about how great they're recruiting. And when you think about two and ten and trying to recruit to that record, I think you got to tip your hats to them. But yeah, you know some of those numbers you can uh, shoot. You could probably bend them one way or the other to make it positive or negative. But mm-hmm. I think that that stat in particular is interesting to me. That you know it, that would put them at number twenty-two in the country. And yeah. I think uh, you know they're it's so marginal right now, especially early in the year. You think about a team like Kentucky right now at number twenty-two overall. In the country, I mean, they've got 13 commitments to Arkansas's 11. They've got three four-star committed guys to Arkansas's two. So that's a very small difference when you step back and look at it. So, you know, I, I don't think there's there's the panic button situation that a lot of people make it out to be. Um, you know, I, that average player rating to me right now is really important. I think they've gotten a lot of quality guys. You know, when you talk about a Savion or a Kelvante Dixon, the offers are there. And, you know, I put a lot of stock into, into you know, who else has offered and gone after these guys. So, yeah, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, just taking a step back and looking at the class right now, 11 committed guys, that's four more than you had at this time last year. Granted, at the end of July last year, you picked up some steam and started adding some guys. And we'll see. Maybe that's the case again this year. Danny West from Hogsports.com joining us here. Danny, we've been uh, we've been corrected. I knew we probably would be, but Aaron oh boy. Aaron Billings, you know Warren produces a lot of talent, right? Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Jerry's <laughs> right. Greg Childs. That's the one. My Chris bad. Greg. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, but those guys weren't any good, man. I yeah, mean, they didn't really turn out that good. Yeah, who were they? <laughs> yeah. My bad. Yeah, That's well, I, I glossed over it too, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was part of the uh, the great 2008 recruiting class. Um, Matt Bohannon also asked, can you, and the answer is going to be no, but can you or Danny name a quarterback who played high school ball or is from Arkansas who was successful in the NFL? And right now, your best answers are probably Ryan Mallett, if you consider that successful, um, Brandon Allen, if you consider that successful, but there's. It's crazy. There was a thread on the Razor's Edge, our premium That's forum the other day. Question. Just that, you know, there aren't any guys who were raised in Arkansas, whether they were born in Arkansas or not, played high school ball in Arkansas, who 
went on to have success at quarterback in the NFL. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, Mallet would be the one. And, shoot, he graduated high school in Texas, you know. So, yeah. I mean. He was born in yeah, Batesville, a, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I think he spent time up here in Lincoln. Yeah. You know, in Lincoln, I think he's Arkansas. he's got a lot of family so, in Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's yeah. bounced around a little bit. Yeah, pretty Yeah, crazy. that's the only one. All right. Let's see what we got here next on the docket for you, Danny. SEC Media Day is coming up. That's exciting. That? I mean, we're right around the corner. That's next week for SEC Media Days. And, you know, Arkansas goes on Wednesday. I'm actually going in on Tuesday. So, usually I fly in for the whole thing. And right. I remember just thinking last year, man, you know, Arkansas fans care, but they don't care as much about getting, you know, all this stuff. And the last day, Thursday, this is this is – this this stinks for these schools, but Kentucky and Vanderbilt, Auburn, Kentucky, Vanderbilt. So you got probably some reporters coming up uh, from Auburn, you know, to Birmingham. Not a, not a bad drive at all yeah. uh, to cover this thing. But Kentucky, Vanderbilt, you're pretty much going to have Kentucky and Vanderbilt media uh, and Auburn media there, and that's it because nobody's going to stick around for Derek Mason on Thursday. <laughs> so, but I just look at this list like Dan Mullen. You know, Dan Mullen can be somewhat entertaining. He's a Florida guy, so that's going to bring some media attention. He's going to be entertaining, but I don't know. Dan's, you know, yeah, he's, he's kind of Dan's nerdy. Dan. I don't want to say he's nerdy, but he, you know, he's, <laughs> you he, almost said it. Yeah. But you almost said it. <laughs> well, he is kind of, you know, but. Um, you know, he, he's coming in Monday. Ed Orgeron, who will be entertaining, you know, won't say a whole lot. I mean, he'll he'll say a whole lot, but there won't understand. be – Right. But there won't be a lot behind it. You know, he's going right. to end every question with, I'm so proud to be the head football coach at LSU. <laughs> you know, that's going to be – that's Thank you. That's going to be pretty much – his whole his whole day and then Barry Owen right. from Missouri I mean not going to be that entertaining either Tuesday I mean Kirby Smart Matt Luke Jeremy Pruitt Jimbo Fisher I mean talk about a snoozer I mean Jimbo can be entertaining obviously because yeah. you know he, he gets so much out in a short amount of time which well um, I'd hate to transcribe that one oh you yeah. know what man that'd be rough that's good I'll tell you what those girls sit up there ladies I should say get up there with their uh I don't know how those courtroom things work where that people are typing on those courtroom things. Yeah. You know, they just have a few keyboards yeah. and they do all these words. I need to figure that out because I've always wondered. But, you know, they, they do a pretty good job transcribing all that stuff. But for Jimbo, that's going to be a tough mm. one. Wednesday's a pretty good day uh, just because for Arkansas fans, I should say, because you got Chad Morris. I didn't think Chad really said a whole lot last year, you know, which – uh, right. and, and part of that was we had heard so much of it. We had so much exposure to him early on with being, yep. you know, just on the job a few months. So for us, it was kind of just a rehash of everything that he'd said already. But you do have Nick Saban, uh, which is going to draw a lot of attention. Will Muschamp is going to, you know, have some have some quips and, you know, he's going to lash out, not lash out, but, you know, he's going to have some interesting things to say to, to media people. Oh, yeah. uh, Joe Moorhead probably not going to say a whole lot. And then I mentioned Thursday with really – you know, Gus Malzahn is, you know, he may be a great football coach, but he's, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know if you ask people in Auburn, maybe not, but uh, yeah. he's not going Debatable. to, answer, he's not going to say a whole lot on the stage and neither right. is Mark Stoop really. And Derek Mason is going to do everything he can to get his message out there. He will, Derek Mason will go to every single radio person, every single one of them uh, and do an interview. So um, anyway, that's SEC nice. media days. We're going to talk a little bit, Danny, about who Arkansas is going to bring. I'll tell you, if you want to go first, you can go first, but I think we're probably going to end up with the same people. You want to go first? How about you go first? But I, okay. I guarantee you we're going to be really close here. Okay, so last year, just to put it in perspective, Arkansas brought Yelda Froholt, Dre Greenlaw, and Santos Ramirez, one offensive lineman and two defensive players. Not a lot of pal with that group there, yeah. um, uh, you know, outside of Arkansas fans, I should say. Uh, so – Right now, Dijon Harris, first of all, if you're putting bets on it, Dijon Harris is off the board. Dijon Harris is going to SEC media days. There's no yep. question that he's going. Um, maybe put McTelvin again at about minus 500. I think that <laughs> when you look at when you look at SEC media days, I don't think it should necessarily just be seniors, although the two guys I mentioned are seniors. I don't think it should necessarily just be seniors. I think it should be your best two returning players who have been mm -hmm. basically model, model – citizen athletes uh, since they've been on campus. So I'm going to go with Dijon. 
I'm going to go with McTelvin, and I'm going to go with Rakeem Boyd, probably minus 200. I think Rakeem is your best offensive guy. He's not a senior, but I could see him as a guy that goes pro early. But So that's my three, and the only way I would like maybe hesitate on those is because, again, it's two defensive guys and one offensive player. So that's the only reason I would hesitate a little bit. All right, Danny, you're up. I also went the same exact. I went two defensive players, Scuda, obviously that's a no-brainer. But where I switched it up a little bit is I could see T.J. Smith going yeah. over Sosa. I could uh, see I that. Think he would, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, you want guys who have been through it. And, uh, you know, most of that is on the defensive side right now. I'm with you on Rakeem Boyd. You know, I think everybody's a fan of sending a quarterback. But mm-hmm. neither one of those guys have been here and lived through it. So you can't send Hicks or right. Starkle. Yes, you know, I but totally agree no with that. No disrespect to them at all. But you've got to – you've got to send guys who have lived through two and 10 and Mm -hmm. four and eight. So yeah, I think Sosa probably has a little more name recognition, you know, around the league, but TJ is another senior. He would do really, really well with the interviews. So, uh, and Rakeem Boyd, you know, he's been here for one year, but he's lived through two and 10, you know, he's got the storylines with Texas A&M last chance, you finding success here at Arkansas and, uh, you know, I think he's kind of got that charm, you know, if you want to call it charm, to go with all of that. So mm-hmm. those would be my three as well. I knew we would agree. And, you know, I think people think we talk about these things, no. you know, beforehand sometimes. It's just it always amazes me. It's kind of frustrating for you to be so much like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, if you follow it close enough, I mean, I, I think I think we pretty well nailed it last year also with Yelda, Dre, and Santos. Yeah. I mean, those were yeah. those were just kind of given. With Brett, it was really easy because you knew he was always going to take seniors, so that really narrowed it down also. But sure. I could see TJ. I could see TJ going. TJ's a great interview. I'll tell you another TJ who's yes, a good interview is. That, that is not going is TJ Hammonds. TJ Hammonds would be fantastic on stage, but they would <laughs> – you know, that's one yeah. of the guys that doesn't pay attention to, you know, when they have the sit down meetings, like this is how you handle the media. It's, <laughs> it's, you always answer that it's always about the team. Anybody asks you a pointed question about how you're doing, you say it's about everybody, you know, and you end up with the, all these boring quotes that you can't use. But uh, TJ Hammonds. TJ Hammonds like would that. have people, he would have people across this league ready to headhunt him. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. he would let it, he'd let it fly. Danny, I want to bring you into a little bit of basketball recruiting now. Um, okay. What, what's the latest going on here with, with Razorback basketball? You might have to catch me up a little bit since I've been gone the past week also. Yeah, you missed quite a bit. Um, I'll start with a Phil Horton. Uh, you know, the Delaware transfer, he came in last week for his official visit. I actually shot him a text yesterday and, you know, just kind of said, hey, where are you with this? Anything happening you know, any kind of new updates that I need to know about. And he's like, no, nah, man, I'm just out here playing uh, pickup games in my neighborhood. So maybe he's not as concerned about it as, mm-hmm. you know, Razorback fans. Well, he's like are a week away here. from deciding, right? I think it'll be this week. This yeah, week? it could be middle of the week this week. That's kind of what he's leaning towards, not to speak for him, but that's kind of what he's suggested so mm-hmm. far. So that'll be Arkansas or Pitt. You know, when he left here, I think I said, I think it's going to be Arkansas and Uh, You know how these things go. The longer it takes, the more you start to doubt yourself a little bit. So we'll see with that one. You know, they've had quite a few visitors come up over the last couple of weeks, Uh, 2020 targets, 2021s. I know you missed the uh, hog hustle last week. We Mm -hmm. had Jalen Ricks on there. I thought that was was an interesting interview to hear from him. Uh, Chris Moore told me over the weekend the 2020 – um, guy, a four-star guy out of West Memphis. He told me that he was planning on coming up last week, but he couldn't make it. So mm-hmm. he's he's having to push that back a little bit. Uh, so uh, I guess that'll be uh, next month. It would have to be next month unless he wants to sneak up here for one of those evaluation day weekends. You know how the basketball system works. They've got some weird dates going on. But So, yeah, that, that pretty much wraps it up. I would keep an eye on Chris Moore getting up here for a visit. Uh, you know, they've had Jalen Williams, they've had Moses Moody come up. So to get Chris up here for an unofficial would be really key for him. Man, if they could get those three, Danny, for 2020, along with K.K. Robinson inside the state, I mean, what a fantastic start. I mean, and then, you know, maybe 
there's plenty of big name guys like Bryce Thompson who visited, um, I guess two yeah. Tuesdays ago. Was that last Tuesday or Tuesday before? I can't remember. A vacation uh, head. I got I got all my dates mixed up. But um, you know, they get those four to go with you know a big out of state guy. Also, I mean, that would be a tremendous start to the Muslim era. Not that he hasn't had a tremendous start. I mean, he he doesn't have any commitments for 2019. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're all transfers, every one of them, especially with you know now with um, Justice Hill uh, deciding to transfer out uh, or or join the football team. Any any new word on that, by the way, Danny? I haven't heard a word on that. Um, you know, all we know is they they ask him to come out for spring football this year, and mm-hmm. um, he didn't do it. So uh, that's not to say that he can't do it later. But I I don't know for you know exactly what he's thinking right now. So maybe I'll check in with Justice and okay. see what's happening. All right, Danny. Danny, anything else for us before I let you go? No, I think that's it, man. Um, no, I think that's it. <laughs> I'm okay. just uh, sitting around reading my preseason magazines. Got my Phil Still open here, so yeah. trying to catch up on all these new names. I picked up the Phil Still the other day. Now, I had the Athlon Lindy's and Phil Still now. So, All right, go. Danny. Appreciate you, man. All right, buddy. See you. All right, that was Danny West with hogsports.com. I want to remind you one more time before we move on to answering a few questions. Um or actually, we're going to bring in Pete Roulier next. But before I jump into that, uh, I want to remind you to go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. If you're watching on Facebook Live or on YouTube, uh, throw us that thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Like, share, follow, comment, as we say. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, throw us five stars if you like the content and a review. Spotify, Stitcher, or other ways to listen. Hogsports.com, just $1 right now if you sign up for your first month and then regular price after that. Or you can sign up for a year take uh, a seven-day free trial and get 30% off your first year. Okay, next up, I'm going to bring up my man Pete Roulier, who's going to uh, – Pete's been kind of counting down some things with Razorback football, counting down to kickoff. I think we're at 54 days right now, so uh, we'll get Pete Roulier on and see what he has to say. Also, a little bit of Team USA stuff. Going Thanks, Trey. What's up, Pete? Pete Roulier is our main staff writer. He covers everything from football, basketball, baseball, chips in on recruiting also, and – and uh, anything else we need him to do. Um, but Pete really yeah, doing a great job. How long have you been with us now, Pete? That's a good, I was actually thinking that the other day. It feels like it's been forever. <laughs> That's not good. You're making me do baseball season was real long. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I, I say I think I think we uh, kick things off in February. Yeah, is what I remember. I think I think you're right. But what you're supposed to say is like it, it, it's gone by so quickly. <laughs> no, I, that, if we're being honest, yeah. no, no, I'm just kidding. It's been great, man. It's been a lot yeah. of fun. Well, we've enjoyed having you over there, and uh, and you've done a, a great job progressing. I see the growth, and uh, looking forward to jumping into football season. And I think one of the things that um, has been good is this countdown that you've been doing. I think people have really enjoyed it. Uh, recently you've done, I guess, a lot of offensive linemen, Brady Latham at 62, Shane Clinton, 57, uh, defensive lineman and Zach Williams, uh, also in there, Bo Limmer at 55 and Austin Caps at 54. Offensive line has been an area I think where they've done a lot very quickly to improve the overall health in terms of numbers up front on the offensive line. Also got a big commitment and to Crawford coming in. Yes. So I think if you look at six two scholarship guys that are here that weren't here last year and the four incoming freshmen, the two JUCO guys, mm-hmm. you got the incoming freshman, Dylan Rathke, Bo Limmer, Ricky Stromberg, and Brady Latham. I think the guy to look out for in terms of maybe playing this year, or well, maybe two, Stromberg and Limmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just because I feel like the tackle positions are a little more competitive right now. Mm-hmm. And then maybe in the interior, it's not as – you know, set in stone with Austin Caps is going to be coming back. I actually just did number 54 today. You can go check that out on hogsports.com. Austin Caps got to play defense for two years, which is a shame because I feel like if he did play offense for a while, he's just a smart football player, yeah, I can a mean go. football player. Uh, but but it's still questionable if he's going to be able to get together left guard. I think if you're an Arkansas fan, you think hopefully he will because – you know, he's going to be a senior. But uh, who knows what that's going to happen there. Then Ty Cleary having trouble with the snaps, even having some trouble last year and other things. Shane Clinton might move into that center role. I think Shane Clinton might be the only guy that you have really have penciled in there in the interior line. So Stromberg and Limmer. Limmer could play center potentially. Mm-hmm. I know his uh, coach in high school thought he might be a, a college center, maybe even an NFL center one day. So, uh, And then Stromberg's another guy in the interior to look after. And then you go to the JUCO guys. Cunningham is probably going to start somewhere, right? I think that's what we came to the conclusion. Uh, either at left tackle over Colton Jackson, the incumbent starter, 
or he might move into that left guard position, which he did a little bit during the spring due to some injury and some illness, moved around a little bit. And then Chibwezi Nwana is also going to be a guy that will push for playing time either in the interior or the exterior. Mm -hmm. So with all that being said, you got a lot more depth than you had last year. Yeah. And I think that's what excites a lot of people. Not, I mean, and also for practice, I mean, think about being able to put actual two teams out there or three teams of offensive linemen who are on scholarship. Uh, and now the number, I guess, is at 16 with um, with Luke Jones, who I, I guess won't be eligible. Um, yeah, good stuff, Pete. Hey, I want to take you down the road for baseball. I know baseball season's over, but Team USA uh, going on. Um and uh, Heston Kerstad and uh, Casey Opitz both made the, the final roster. Um, what can you tell us about what's going on there? Yeah, Heston Kerstad and Casey Opitz both made the final roster. I think the big news there is that Casey Martin didn't make it. Yeah. But I'll get to that in a second. I'll just go over. They just finished their first series of the – they did a couple of inter-squad matches and things like that. They just did their first um, five-game series of the summer. They played Cuba. If I'm not mistaken, I think they took uh, – four or five in the Cuba series. So uh, in terms of Arkansas players, Kerstad had uh, quite a series, man. I think he went, let's see, uh, six for 11 from the uh, batter's box, started in four games, played in five, played in all five, hit 545, had a big double that brought in a couple RBIs. So Kerstad had a nice series. Um, Opus still kind of struggled from the plate. He went 0 for 4 in two starts, but not a lot of news there. No homers or anything. No big Kerstad bombs. But I think the big news was that Martin didn't make the team because it was really exciting that he was getting an opportunity during the tryouts to play either center field. They had him playing a little bit of third base. And those are all positions that Arkansas fans have thought maybe Martin could excel at because he had such an interesting season. It was always an adventure when Martin got the ball at shortstop is what I like to say. Mm -hmm. It's because he had those 23 errors. But People thought maybe it'd be a new position. Then Van Horn came out at the end of the season saying, no, Casey's going to play shortstop. He goes to Team USA, and I'm playing all these different positions. So it was kind of a bummer he didn't make the team because we could kind of see what was going to happen with him next year. Maybe if he excelled at center field or third base, Van Horn would have no choice but to put him there. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a bummer. He just couldn't get a going from the play like he did all season long, and they didn't feel the need to keep him around because they got a bunch of good shortstops and infielders and outdoors anyway. So that was kind of a bummer for uh, Martin. Pete Royer with hogsports.com joining us here. As I mentioned before, Pete covers Razorback football, basketball, baseball, recruiting. Does uh, kind of our utility guy, does a, a lot of everything, our main baseball writer also. And um, Pete, I, if there's anything else, like I said, I was out last week, so you guys are kind of educating me in a, in a, in a way, recapping some stuff. So, so if there's anything that I missed, feel free. How about this, Trey? We'll get okay. into uh, – I did, I did a story about the – three breakout Razorbacks for every sport next year. Okay. That was kind of the summer looking forward to it. I want to see if you agree with me on some of these. Okay. Um, for football, I kind of went the easy route. All right. I went with Trey Knox mm -hmm. and, uh, I think it's just one of those guys that you look at and he wasn't there. Yes. Last year. And you look at last year, how many guys really excited you on the offensive side of the ball besides maybe Rakeem Boyd, mm -hmm. but Trey Knox, you just look at him and you can see he's just a difference maker this spring. I think if the offensive line gets together and one of these two quarterbacks and Ben Hicks and Nick Starkwood, if they can get him the ball, um, I think he's definitely going to be a difference maker and the breakout racer back for football. So what do you think about that? I, I could absolutely get on board with that. I think that Trey Knox has a good chance to lead the SEC – or lead the SEC – lead Arkansas in receiving next season. The record for mm -hmm. receptions by Razorback is 37 as a freshman. So I think that absolutely he could. But I would caution a little bit because, you know, think about how great Jarius Wright and Greg Childs, Joe Adams, those guys were. Um, they didn't reach those numbers. I think Greg and Joe – or Greg and Jarius had 19 catches apiece their freshman year. Uh, but with Arkansas being so thin at wide receiver, I could absolutely see uh, Trey Knox emerging as the leading receiver. I think that maybe C.J. O'Grady ends up leading the team in receivers, even though he's a tight end. Right. I could see that. Uh, but I could also see Trey Knox breaking that record 37 set by Marcus Monk back in, what, 2006, I think, something like that. All right, so I guess I didn't do too bad on that one. So no, that's, nailed it. basically, what we're doing is you're grading how I did while you were gone. <laughs> did I did I make any major mistakes while I was gone? I so, think but you, for basketball, yeah, I think you for, did well while I was gone. I, I peeked in. I couldn't stay away 100. percent No, I know. I knew you were watching. I 100 percent knew that. But anyway, going to basketball for a breakout player, I went with Reggie Cheney, mm -hmm. and that's basically just on the fact that Arkansas was kind of expected to go out and maybe get a 
transfer this year that would be immediately eligible. And as of now, with they still have that 13th scholarship, and you're talking to Danny about what they might do with it. But I, it doesn't look like they're going to get a big man that's going to be immediately yeah. eligible. They got Van over, but he's not going to be playing until next year. They got Gene Tao Siala, but it's not – Gene Tao is not one of those guys that's going to be a Daniel Gafford type. He's not right. really a center. He's more of a uh, – you know, utility kind of right. forward. So I think Reggie Cheney has an opportunity to start next year. And when he got his opportunity, he didn't start in the NIT when Gafford was gone, but he did play a lot. He even had a record-breaking performance against Providence. I think if he gets that opportunity, he's athletic enough. He's defensive-minded enough. I think he's I think he's going to have, have a really good opportunity to play. So it's really going to be up to him, I think, if he wants to break out and become a star for the Arkansas team. Yeah, there's no reason that he can't improve his free throw percentage 15 points also in the offseason. I mean, if he can do that, then you can rely on him more regularly. I think that's a good bet. I mean, I think Jalen Harris is another guy. If they can rework his shot mechanics a little bit, that might be another Absolutely. guy you consider. I talked to Musselman a few weeks ago. might have been a month ago. I can't remember. But um, just about – some of the guys that have a little bit of funny mechanics, and he's big on reworking that kind of stuff. So uh, maybe if they could rework Jalen Harris's mechanics, but Reggie Cheney's another guy that needs to rework some things. I mean, he's, his elbow and wrist don't really sync up like they should. All right, who'd you go with with baseball? I went with Casey Opitz, and it's not because Casey Opitz had a bad year last year. Because in fact, I mean, he's playing for Team USA right now, right? Mm-hmm. He just was very below average from the plate, and. uh if Casey Opus can get it going from the plate, he'll without a doubt be one of the best players in the country and a high draft pick at that. Because throwing out, what was it? Let me look at the stats right quick. 23 of 46 base runners is unheard of. Um, absolutely just insane from behind the plate, but hitting 243. And then what really just I think is going to help him is Van Horn said he's going to make a jump hitting wise without a doubt in his mind. He needs to get a little bit stronger. And then, like you said with Shane, maybe rework some of his swing. It's just he's such a good baseball player. He's so smart. And guys like that, they just figure it out. Mm -hmm. This was his first full year playing collegiate baseball, and uh, he proved what he can do. He proved that he can play at that level. Now he just needs to get the hitting going. And I don't know if he's going to be a home run guy, but maybe a guy at the bottom of the order. that. And Van Horn likes putting players in the bottom of the order that can hit and he trusts to hit. So uh, maybe a guy at the bottom of the order that can – emerge in his junior year, which which happens a lot in baseball. You think about Spanberger and Ben Attendi, um, Jack Kelly this year, juniors that really get it going from the plate. Um, maybe Opus is going to be one of those guys. So those are my three. All right. I'm not going to disagree with, with, uh, with baseball. You know a lot more about that than I do. But I'm going to go Fair ahead and enough. say uh, this has been your best show to date, Pete. So go ahead and ring the bell if you want. And Ooh. we're going to, we're going to get you out of here with a uh, uh, last words of wisdom. I always ask you for that, but so far you haven't had anything wise to say. Well, since I'm nailing <laughs> it, I'll go ahead and keep on doing that. All right. Tell me if you know who this is. Okay. And, and here's a hint. You can't see him. Okay. Okay. Opportunity may sometimes fall in your lap, but it takes grinding hard work to turn luck into success. Always. You can't see him. You can't see him. Uh, you're going to have to tell me. All right. It's John Cena. All right. I was looking for something inspirational. We only with John Cena today. Okay. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> All right, Trey. Okay, man. You. All right. Thanks, Pete. That's Pete Roulier with hogsports.com. Pete uh, does a great job with us. All right, we're going to close out the show answering some of these questions that have built up here. Don't want to don't want to overlook those. So, uh, Shannon Ernest says, will Morris stay coach with another 0-8 SEC record? Um, I think he will. I don't think he's going 0-8 in the SEC I mean, I guess he did last year, but I would be surprised if they did that again. And I don't think you fire a coach after two years anyway. Even though I have seen um, – who was Arkansas's first defensive coordinator that didn't make it, ended up going to South Carolina. I can see his face right now. And then took the head coaching job at Southern Miss after Larry Fedora had a lot of success there, and they went 0-12, and and he was fired that first year. So uh, that's an instance, but – I don't, I don't, I'm not into the, the firing coaches after two or three years business unless it's just a disaster, uh, which I guess that would be 0-8 again. Uh, Cody Adams says, what's your thoughts on our offense and how are they looking with the start of the season right now around the corner? Well, I think they're going to make a dramatic improvement this year. I don't know that they're going to be the force that they could be eventually before things are said and done, but uh, they get, they're going to rely on so many young players on offense. But the offensive line will be better. They've definitely improved the quarterback situation. They've got more weapons. I'll be a, 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 although they're young uh, at wide receiver, but they're going to make a nice jump and improvement on offense this season. 
Terry Roy says Maine is beautiful. The bed and breakfast places are great. We rented a house a little bit out in the country. I can't even remember the name of the, the city, but it was it was about a 15-minute drive to get into Portland. But, uh, yeah, we had a great time in Maine. Also spent a little time in New Hampshire and Boston. Boston. Uh, Jess Bond says just beat Ole Miss. Got a great story on it. The importance of – I say it's great. I think it's great. Uh, great take on um, Arkansas's importance, uh, the importance of beating the Ole, uh, the Ole Miss Rebels. Um in Oxford week two. Uh, Jess says uh, two wins, maybe three. I think they get more than that. But, um, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, but they, they, there's no reason that Arkansas should lose their four non-conference games. There's no excuse. Uh, Kenny D. Jones says, does Nick Starkle have more tangible – intangibles? More tangibles? Tangibles, yes. I mean, he's got a bigger arm. He's a little bigger, probably a slightly better runner. Neither of them would be considered great runners by any stretch. But uh, I do think that Nick Starkle can spin it a little bit better than Hicks can. The knowledge of the offense is going to be where Hicks uh, stands out probably. But uh, upside, I think, is with Starkle. Could, poss- um, could be the difference between six and eight win season. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I, I look. I look for them to probably rotate a little bit that first game, but I think Nick Stark will eventually takes over. I also think there's an advantage with him being the quarterback returning possibly next year because uh, he's only a junior. Justin Williams says eight wins this year. Arkansas is going to be surprising this year. I do think that's the absolute everything goes as well as possible scenario, but I'm thinking five six. Joshua uh, Chappelle says Trey, what are your thoughts on the whole transfer business? I personally feel like it's just gotten out of hand. I wrote an article last week that you can read on hogsports.com uh, just breaking down some of my thoughts on how transfer rules could be improved. Uh, I, you say it's gotten out of hand. The real thing that's changed is the transfer portal, which gives them an opportunity to be recruited. But as we said before, there's 400 players in there who don't have a home who were on scholarship basically last year, I guess. I think that's right. Some of them may be walk-ons. But, um, you know, people who had a home last year and and don't necessarily have one this year. So I think that will help some players pump the brakes a little bit, thinking that just because they enter the transfer portal, they're automatically going to find a home. Um, But transfers are needed in college football. If you don't have, like, attrition of at least seven players this doesn't even count adding walk-ons and stuff to, uh, to scholarship but you don't have the attrition of at least seven players every year then you're not going to bring be able to bring in 25 and I think that's going to change in the future with the four game redshirt rule because you're able to redshirt more players so that number is going to go up uh, Michael Pollard says Daniel Gafford and the Bulls have agreed to a rookie contact six million over four years Kyle Clem says um, hearing the equipment tweet last week was a diversion for the new uniforms. They'll be like DMAC era. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're going to be like, but um, it wouldn't surprise me if that was a diversion. Uh, Bart Wilkerson says, I'd say he could be the difference in four to six wins, but that's saying Hicks doesn't look, doesn't do good. I'm not sure what you're asking, Bart. Jim says, Trey, I'm an alumni way out in Fresno, California. Follow the Hogs all year and really appreciate you and Danny and Hog Sports. Watch your live Facebook. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate the accuracy of your reports. I appreciate that, Jim. Thank you. I, I feel like we're really out there in a big way for guys like you, people who live out of state, surrounded by – uh, people who aren't Razorback fans. Uh, Billings, we already went over your post. Appreciate the correction on the Warren High guys. I don't know why we overlooked that, but we did. Uh, Matt, we answered yours about Razorback or uh, Arkansas natives who went on to have a lot of success in the NFL. Um, Aaron says, I won't say I'm uh, not so- – Actually, four from Warren in 2008. Yes, there was uh, Basman Jones. Um, we, we didn't mention Basman Jones. He did not make it uh, to campus, but Basman Jones actually did uh, sign with Arkansas also. I believe he ended up signing. Was that the time where you can only sign 25? He might have not have ended up signing but was committed. I can't remember exactly. Uh how will we finish on the O-line class? I think Garrett Hayes is a guy to obviously keep an eye on. There's a lot of guys out of Memphis. There's like four guys out of Memphis uh, that they're in on. But Garrett Hayes out of Athens, Texas, probably Arkansas or Texas A&M for him. Uh, but probably just need to bring in three. Um, Fred, Fred McClellan asked that question. Probably just need to bring in three because they also have Luke Jones in the class and have a lot of other needs. I, I went through it the other day, but when you start thinking about the number of players they need to bring in at each position group, you get up to about 28 uh, signees pretty quickly and they only have 25 obviously 
Uh, Dustin says, Trey Biddy, thanks for all the great information. Hope you had a great vacation. I appreciate that. I did have a great vacation. Like I was saying, it was one of those where you almost need a vacation from your vacation. Like one of those where you're sitting on the beach for five days drinking beer <laughs> and doing nothing else. Uh, maybe that's that's in line for next year. Uh, let's see what else. So a lot of comments, basically. All right. My, Matt A. Worley says uni will be more clean with a gray, gray face mask, just a guess. I, I do think it could be more clean. I don't think these last uniforms are that bad. I mean, they weren't really that bad. The problem with them is it's been like the worst seven-year stretch, stretch in Razorback history, and they've had these uniforms on the last four or five years. Uh, Stephen Brooks says, when is fall camp? That should be right around the start of August, end of July, something like that. Uh, I think the start of August is, is probably a good bet uh, for the start of fall camp, but Chad Morris hasn't officially announced that. We're going to find out a lot about that stuff at SEC Media Days. Before we wrap up here, I want to remind everybody one last time, throw us that thumbs up if you haven't done so already. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, throw us five stars and a review if you like the content. Also, can listen to us on Spotify and Stitcher. We're available to watch on Facebook Live and YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications bell so you can be alerted anytime we produce new content on Hog Sports Live. Um, Hog Sports is just a dollar right now for your first month, or um, you can sign up for a year and get 30% off your first year, and that comes with a seven-day free trial, so almost nothing to lose. So for Danny West, for Trey, for Trey Biddy, for me, uh, for Pete Roulier, this has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we will catch you guys next time.